Hi traders, today we're going to talk about position sizing. Is there a holy grail method to position sizing? I'm champion trader Kevin Davey and let's find out. Today we're going to talk about position sizing. And this is going to be kind of a basic class, but I want to at least expose you to some different position sizing methods. And then we can look at some of their features, some of their drawbacks and that kind of thing and reach some general conclusions if we can. So first, our friendly disclaimer, don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Okay, so what I hope to teach today is to give you five simple position sizing methods. All of them have some validity to them. And then determine, hey, is there a best, best method? And can you get reward without risk? And then we'll talk about what position sizing can do and where to get more info. There's literally millions of different ways to position size. And the problem is most people optimize for it. I've actually seen people try 20 different position sizing methods with their back tested strategy, find the one that worked the best and then said, hey, that's the one that's tuned for that strategy and then they go and use it. Bad idea. It's just optimizing. There's always going to be one position sizing method that's best for a particular strategy. So you got to watch out for that trap. And there really is no right way or wrong way to position size. It all depends on your goals. Some people can handle more drawdown, for example, can handle more risk. So their position sizing approach might be something different than what you do as a more conservative trader, for example. And the other big point is you can take a winning strategy, one that makes money over the long term, and if you are overly aggressive with your position sizing, you can blow out an account easily. The flip side, though, isn't true. If you have a bad strategy, good position sizing, even perfect position sizing, isn't going to save you. It will temporarily help, but in the long run, You've got to have a good strategy first. And once you have that, then you put a reasonable position sizing method on it, and then you'll be good. So you've got to have both, but make sure you know the strategy is the more important thing to have at the start. So a lot of people think they can position size their way out of a bad strategy, and that's just not true. Okay, so we're going to look at five ways. Fixed size, one contract per a certain number of dollars, a percent risk method, the Kelly criterion, and then a martingale. Now, number two is probably the most popular because it's pretty simple and it's pretty easy to understand. So that one would be like, hey, I'm going to trade one ES contract for every $20,000 in my account. And then when I go to 40,000, well, now I can increase my size. So that's what number two is. But we'll, I'll describe all of them in the charts that follow. So let's start with fixed size number one. So this one, hey, you're just going to trade one contract regardless of how big your account gets. Now, is that realistic? Well, no, but it is a way to do it. And as your account grows, your position size doesn't change and therefore your risk per trade actually goes down but uh, you know some people do this where they just hey I'm just gonna trade one let it go now it doesn't take advantage of any compounding which adding contracts would so but this is a good baseline you know everybody understands this one hey always trade one contract Okay, number two, as I mentioned, is trade one contract per a certain amount of equity. So in this case, it's $15,000. And every $15,000 of equity, you're going to increase the size by one. 
So by the time you get to 60,000, that's your point where you're trading five contracts. Now, this kind of scales up as your equity goes up. So a lot of people like it for that reason. So we'll include it. Percent risk is sort of similar to the dollars per contract, but it uses the actual strategy st statistics. So you can use your average loss, which is what I use here. You could use your maximum loss. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And then you use percent risk, and that's something you set. Now, a lot of people say, hey, only use 1% or 2% risk. Some people use 5, 10, or even more percent risk per trade. But that's the one variable you can set in this. And once you do, you just multiply it by your equity, divide it by your back-tested average loss or maximum loss, and then you round it, and that gives you number of contracts to trade. And you can see that kind of goes up with equity also. The fourth one is a, a little more unique. It's called the Kelly Criterion. I'm not going to fully explain it, but the equation's there. And it involves the statistics of your back-tested strategy. And that will determine the number of contracts. So it's supposed to be sort of an optimum, or at least a close to optimum type approach, where you're betting as much as you can without really blowing out your account. Now there's something similar called Optimal F, that is supposed to be the optimum, and I'm not going to talk about that one in this study, but Kelly Criterion, Optimal F, tend to be more for the riskier people out there because they do tend to take bigger size bets. And uh, it's an interesting way to do it. The one thing you have to keep in mind, it's based on your back test. So, if your back test is garbage, if it's over optimized, it's going to have you betting way too much in real time. So that's something to keep in mind. So some people like to use a modified version of this where they do the Kelly criterion, but then they take a certain percentage of it. So I didn't look at that for this, but that's something you could think about. And then the fifth one is one uh, probably every gambler likes. It's the old Martingale where after every loss, you double the number of contracts you trade. Or you could add on by one. That would be a variation of this. But the pure martingale, you double after every one. And after you win, it goes back to one contract. So the idea is when you have a lot of losers in a row, you're more likely to have a winner, or so the theory goes. Uh, this one you got to be really careful because all of a sudden you could be trading at eight contracts, for example, after a few losses, and that one loses and then you're in trouble. If you do this with roulette, for example, eventually you will lose. You will run out of money. It's pretty much guaranteed. Um, even if you had an infinite bankroll, uh, that's probably the only way actually it would work. And nobody has an infinite bankroll. Nobody, there's table limits in roulette. And that's why this doesn't work. But a lot of people at roulette tables try this. And it usually works for a while. If you bet on red, you know, what are the chance of four or five blacks coming in a row? Probably pretty small. And you can usually do this pretty safely for a while. But eventually there's going to be that long string of consecutive black numbers coming up and then you're in trouble and you get wiped out. So the Martingale is definitely pretty high risk, but I thought I'd include it because a lot of traders seem to like it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use two walk forward real-time histories for two sample strategies that I have. One's a gold strategy, one's a euro. It's not important what the strategies are. What is important is how the position sizing impacts it. And that's kind of what I want to show here. And I'm going to allow something something ridiculous. I'm going to allow up to 100 contracts. I mean, that's a lot. You know, practically nobody trades 100 contracts. A lot of people on SIM do. <laughs> but a lot of real futures traders that I know, very few of them uh, trade 100 contracts. It's it, 
that's a big number. But I kind of wanted to do it to eliminate any of the contract limits with the approaches. And then I'm going to do something else crazy. I'm going to stop trading, but not until I hit a 90% drawdown, which, wow, I mean, that's big. So let's just say you started with $20,000. Well, now you're going to trade until you have 2000 left. Um, that's that's kind of crazy. And it's 90% of your peak equity at any point in time. So um, that's a substantial loss. Most people wouldn't be able to do this. But I wanted to show it just to to let it go and see what happens. Okay, so here's my example. Here's the uh, equity curves for the two systems. You see the gold system in light blue. You see the euro system in dark blue and the combination in that magenta, I guess, pink color. That's a single contract. And you can see over the time period we looked at, uh, they each made about $60,000 but had different kinds of equity paths to get there. And uh, I think you'll find that's important. And then uh, added up, they had $120,000 per contract. So one contract of each over this period. So they were pretty decent systems, but they did have drawdowns. And that's where a lot of these position sizing methods really get you is during the drawdowns. Okay, so first chart. Let's look at gold, $25,000 starting equity. And we're going to stop after a 90% drawdown. And here's how the different systems work. Uh, the one contract always buried, so you can't even see that. That's below another one. But uh, you can see the Martingale is the one that, hey, man, that really can up your game. You know, probably because you have a few losses in a row that are small, and then you have a big winner. But also look at the Martingale as far as that big drawdown towards the, the last third. I mean, all of a sudden it goes down, but then it picks it up again. That's pretty typical of a martingale. It's kind of a boomer bust type thing, but certainly it has the potential to just outshine everything. Uh, it just takes nerves of steel <laughs> or some other body part, right, to, uh, to actually work. Otherwise, it's crazy. And then you can see the Kelly criterion. That's the green curve. That has a lot of ups and downs, too, because, again, it's pretty high risk. And then if you look at the 2% risk, that's uh, the fixed one uh, at 2%. That's not too much. Um, and adding one contract every certain amount, that, that has ups and downs, too. But those two and the one contract always are relatively benign compared to the Kelly criterion and especially the martingale. Okay, so now let's take a look at a different starting equity. And then you can see the first three are all about the same. Again, they don't look too exciting. It's the Kelly and the martingale that really are just going crazy. And you have to decide if this is worth doing. Um, you know, certainly going with the Martingale and the Kelly, you're over a million dollars equity, and then you go down to about 200,000 uh, very quickly. Uh, that's kind of nuts, right? <laughs> but hey, if you like it, go for it. Okay, so the uh, Euro, let's take a look at the Euro and see how that looks. Well, this is kind of interesting because the Euro looks quite a bit different. And remember, it had the same end equity overall. It just had a different looking equity curve. And in this one, the Martingale fails miserably. It starts to go up, and then it hits that 90% drawdown, and then flatlines, meaning it can't trade anymore. It just, the Martingale blew you out, okay? And then the Kelly criterion, that did too. Didn't blow you out where you lost all your money, but... You'd had that 90% drawdown and then couldn't trade. Again, the blue curve and the yellow curve, which are the one contract only and the 2% risk, those kind of go up and, and you know don't do a whole lot. The craziest one here probably is the uh, magenta curve where you're adding every $25,000. And I think you're just getting some big contract sizes towards the end 
and then it's just jumping around like crazy. So you, you might think, hey, that's great. You know, I, get, I make $400,000 where if I just traded one contract, I'd make 100000 or whatever. Uh, remember, you'd have to live through those drawdowns that I show there. And that's pretty painful um, to, you know, on an intellectual level to say, oh, I could do that. That's one thing, but to actually live it, that's the tough part. So let's look at $50,000 equity. And again, we see the same sort of thing. Martingale blows out. Kelly Criterion blows out. And then the other ones uh, are kind of balanced a little bit. And in this case, the magenta curve, since you're only adding every $50,000 of equity that you're adding, it's not as bad. So in this case, the, the purple one or the magenta one might not be that bad of an approach. Okay, so what have I just shown here? Well, the big thing is, notice you, you change the approach, and it's easy to show enormous account growth by just selecting the right position sizing method. But it's also easy to blow the account out. So with gold, hey, use the martingale. Look how great it looked. But with the euro, oh, use martingale, blow your account out. Yikes, you know, it's different results for the same position sizing method. And if your present risk method, for example, is off, you might not be allowed to take a trade at all. It might say, hey, your risk is too high, don't trade. And nobody likes that, right? You build systems to trade them. So you got to watch out for that sometimes with these approaches. And there is no one size fits all. You notice I got different best results depending on the strategy and the starting equity and also what approach I used. So, you know, one approach worked great in one case, but not in other cases and vice versa. And that's back to where a lot of people get confused and get messed up is they think they have to find the perfect position sizing method for their strategy. And really, all you're doing is just fitting your position sizing method to past data. <clears throat> so it doesn't mean it's going to be the best going forward. And that's what you got to keep in mind and remember. Most people lose sight of that. So the big question is here is, is there some way we can position size where we get a lot of reward for a little risk? Uh, some people will tell you yes. And usually those people, what, what they're talking about is they're talking about using quote unquote house money. So let's say you, you trade for a while and you're up a bunch. You take that profit and now you're more risky with it because you're willing to lose that because even if you lose it, you'll still end up where you started. Well, some people think that's, well, hey, there's no risk involved in that. Well, I guess it depends how you look at it. But for me, I look at every dollar that's in my account, whether it's an open trade or not, is my money. And if I'm going to risk it, it doesn't matter if it's past profits, current profits, open profits, closed profits. It doesn't really matter. I treat it all the same. But if you treat it as something different, then you could argue, hey, I get something for nothing because I'm letting it ride, you know, as gamblers would say. So one thing we can do, though, to, to kind of see if we can get more reward for a certain amount of risk is look at something called the MAR ratio, or you might have heard it as the CalMAR ratio. It's basically your annual percent return divided by your maximum drawdown. Uh, there's a variation on this where you could use your average percent drawdown, but I'm just going to use the max here. And obviously you want this as high as possible, right? You know, if, if you could get 10 times the return for a certain amount of percentage drawdown, you'd be happy as a clam, right? Problem is, 10 to 1 is kind of unrealistic, but at least it gives you an idea of what, what is out there and what you're looking for. 
So here's with the Euro system. What have changed along the x-axis is your starting equity. And then I calculated your annual rate of return for that those equity curves I showed earlier and your max percentage drawdown and basically divided them. So if you look over at the right, I give two uh, horizontal lines. The top one would represent, say, a 40% annual return with a 20% max drawdown. That would give you a return to drawdown of two. And the bottom one represents a return to drawdown of one. Now, ideally, you want to be above one. You know, you don't want to risk more than you're going to get return. Doesn't always work that way, but that's a good, at least baseline to, to aim for. A lot of professional CTAs, they aim for a one-to-one. -one. So they'll endure a 10% drawdown if they get a 10% return. So they look at it like that. So you can see the top three, you know, the, the, the uh, are the ones that don't seem to risk as much. You know, they, they were the kind of bland ones in the previous curves, right? The one contract only, they add one every so off, every so many dollars, and then the percent risk. They bounce around a little bit, but they're generally around 1.5. Now, the, the Kelly and the Martingale, they have more uh, variation because they're more aggressive. So the interesting thing here is below $100,000 starting equity, the Martingale and Kelly are zero or even negative as far as return to drawdown. So they're not very good unless you have a whole lot of money, which I guess kind of makes sense if you think about it because like the Martingale is prone to big losses um, as we saw in the, in the one chart. So when you have big losses, you need to be able to make your account money back. And if you have a small account, you'll get wiped out. So that's kind of a, a hidden thing here. It's kind of saying, hey, if you're using Martingale, you're probably not going to make it with a small account. And again, same thing with the Kelly. You know, if you have infinite money, these things work pretty well. And so the more money you have, the better off you are with them. Okay, with gold... Uh, the results look a little bit different. Uh, here, the Martingale actually looks pretty good with small starting equity. And the that showed up in the equity curve that you saw earlier where the Martingale kind of took off. And then as you add more equity to it, the Martingale isn't as good. And the Kelly still looks kind of the same. You need a lot of money to trade it, and then it kind of evens out. And the other three are kind of in between. So again, same five methods, same axis for the starting equity, yet what's best varies from system to system. So one it depends on the starting equity, and two, it depends on the position sizing method you use. And again, there is no one size fits all, at least in these two cases. And I've looked at a bunch of other position sizing methods over the years, and there really doesn't seem to be one that works everywhere, every time. Now, there's, there's people that claim there are. There's books been written that have said, hey, use this position sizing method, it's the holy grail. And they show lots of nice pretty charts in their book on how it works better than anything else. But, you know, don't forget, they're probably just cherry picking charts. The bottom line with this, uh, in my opinion, there's really no free lunch. If you want bigger returns, you have to be willing to accept bigger risks. So maybe the Martingale system works. Maybe you'll get lucky and whoop, become a millionaire, you know, starting from one contract with a decent system, or maybe you'll get blown out. So uh, it's a nice exercise you can try on your own. Just don't try it with all your money, but maybe 
an option is to take a certain percentage of your capital and it's all risk capital but maybe make a portion ultra risk capital where you say hey I'm gonna take five percent of my account and I'm gonna really try to scale up quickly and see what happens chances are you'll probably get blown out with it but maybe you'll be lucky and, and gain a whole lot so it might be worth something looking at I don't know I don't know your risk profile but it's, it's certainly something to uh, kind of think about and maybe dream about so can there ever be a free lunch without risk well sort of um, you can get position sizing you can use it where you get more than a hundred percent return and the drawdown you know can only be a hundred percent so if you if you kind of shoot for the stars you could get these ridiculously good returns and knowing the worst you can do is blow out your account so in that respect there might be a, a sort of edge case that's a free lunch because you just go crazy if you're willing to lose it all then you might get outsized gains but for most of us doing this professionally that's not a way to go that's more gambling than actually trading I mean yeah you're trading but you're trading with this gamblers mentality uh, but that's up to you and the big thing with this even when you think hey I can get 600 percent return and I can only lose a hundred percent put it into dollar terms and it'll be a little more sobering because maybe you build an account from 10,000 up to 100,000 and then you're going for 200 and you lose the 100,000 well $100,000 loss when you only started with the $10,000 account that's going to give you some serious regret right because you're going to think man I had 10 times my initial capital why didn't I just stop so watch out for that because it's you know it doesn't work out quite the way you think it does a lot of times okay so this is the only the beginning obviously I only looked at five different ways there's a ton of different ways to do it and I didn't even look at portfolios we were just talking single systems that introduces a whole nother level of complexity and I didn't use any Monte Carlo analysis I could have used that to help me figure out well is Martin Gale was it good just for that equity curve or would it be good for a lot of similar equity curves I could have done that and really I could spend as much time working on a position sizing method as I did developing the initial strategy uh, that's certainly the case so if you want to dig into this deeper a couple books uh, Van Tharp definitive guide to position sizing has uh, 31 models but I think he ends up having variations of it and I thought he has close to a hundred different approaches you can try them the problem is most of them uh, are going to work great on some systems and not on others you can also check out the book universal principles of successful trading and that has a big chapter on position sizing so you might find a lot of value there this isn't something I spend a lot of time talking about uh, as you'll see on my website with my free material or even in my workshop because my focus more is on getting strategies that make money and then you worry about the position sizing some people worry about the position sizing first probably because it's neat to see equity curve growth when you're trading 100 contracts but remember you still have to have the good strategy before you get into the position sizing part of it okay so what are the key takeaways here as we kind of wrap up reward and risk generally go together if you want more reward you generally need more risk there is no best position sizing method that I've ever found if you find one that's best and let me know because I'd love to hear it I'd love to try it out and see if it's the best over a bunch of different random equity curves. 
there's a best for each strategy, there might not be a best overall. And since you can do different position sizing for different strategies, you have to be super, super careful to not optimize because that's Order what filled. most people tend to want to do. And then finally, it's very easy to blow out an account with these aggressive approaches. The Kelly criterion is aggressive. Martingale is very aggressive. Yeah, you shoot for the moon. Uh, you know, there there was a, a movie that I just watched recently. Uh, it was Office um, Office Christmas movie. And the guy said, uh, you know, there's a saying in business, shoot for the moon and you'll likely land on the sun. And the other character goes, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to sound. And that's true. Usually when you shoot for the moon, you're going to burn yourself landing on the sun. So watch out for those aggressive methods. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, please, my rule of thumb is the more likes I get, the more videos I create. If nobody liked it, I, I wouldn't be creating them. So give it a thumbs up. And then please, subscribe to this channel. That will keep me creating more content. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, I love hearing from people. As you've seen from past videos, I respond to all the comments and let me know what kind of position sizing you think is best and why I'd love to hear it and then finally in the description if you want a free algo strategy click on the link it'll take you to my website and you can get a free algo so I want to thank you for watching I'm champion trader Kevin Davey have a great day